When I was a preteen, we had to do standardized tests to go to the next grade. This one girl who I've been sitting with all school year, she looks at me and she goes, I'm not gonna pass, can you fail yours too so we can stay behind together? I don't remember what I said, but in my mind I'm thinking, I'm not doing that. <laughs> who do I look like? At the time I was going to church, my youth pastor, she was a teacher. So I tell her the story and she goes, what? She told you to do what? Don't do that. Don't do that at all. Now, mind you, I wasn't going to do that either. <laughs> Never gave coon. Never did. But just know, there are people like Tiffany Haddish who would 100% failed that test on purpose. If you look like me and you meet a black person like this, stay far, far away. They are dangerous. Y'all seen that video with Tiffany Haddish, right? Where Paris Hilton had uh, her walk on the runway and she just like on some I dare you to do it type of thing. I was like... They set her up. They look. I mean, I mean, it just was embarrassing to look at. I was like, Tiffany already got a bad rap for what she did with that whole S A kid thing, and now she's gonna do. Like, she, I don't know what she was thinking when she did that. It just looked like Paris and them were just trying to humiliate her. It just looks real bad, Tiffany Haddish. Um, people, all, people kept saying she's been unprofessional. They said Marlon Wayans say, she asked Marlon Wayans why she couldn't work with him and he was like, because you're unprofessional. I mean, she's a grown woman. She should have known that was gonna, there was cameras and everything. She should have known. I can't even blame Paris in them because she's a grown woman. Like I really wanna not blame her because they kinda, kind of like pushed her to do it but she she she's a grown woman she should have known that was unprofessional but she just didn't care i guess i don't know it just made her look bad i don't know what she thought was gonna come from this she didn't see uh, there was cameras and everything i don't get it i don't get it i seen tiffany haddish live like a year ago and um she's not funny to me she's never been funny to me um, she was a fill-in for D-Ray because he was supposed to perform, but he didn't show up. So Tiffany Haddish was in the crowd, and it was like, this was at the Laugh Factory. And they was like, have Tiffany, I guess they had her perform for him or whatever. So, and it wasn't funny. It was like, I wanted to see D-Ray, but yeah, I don't know, Tiffany. This is not a good look. And I don't know what she got on. I don't got nothing against Tiffany. I, I actually like her. It's just she's been making some bad choices lately. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, though, in the comments. And I'll talk to you guys next time. I had no idea why people were laughing in the middle of her ending. And I was like, did someone did we do something wrong? And everyone was like, Tiffany. She destroyed everyone with laughter. We did the whole I walked the whole thing. I almost went down the stairs. Then I walked around to my seat when I was sitting there. I was like, into my seat like I wasn't doing it. I knew I made a mistake when I put the two of you together and seat. Love that. You just, I mean, it's a danger. First of all, the hat and shoes with the Hilton. It's going to be a problem. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be we such a memorable moment. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for inviting me. I hope I get invited again. Because yes. when, right. when, when, right. when, when I got up, when I got up, when I got up, when I got up, don't wait, but when I got up, the man said, the man said, wait, wait, wait. I want to talk about Tiffany Haddish and the Hiltons at New York Fashion Week. I'm gonna stay in my lane. I specifically wanna talk about a personal story that I have with Tiffany Haddish and her team because I think that it's on creators to call out the actions of the Hiltons in this scenario. So I met Tiffany Haddish 
and her team in the fall of 2021. Um, I was running the number one morning show on Clubhouse, which listen, I know in 2024 might not sound like much, but at the time, um, we had some serious momentum. We had a community of 100,000. We would have 10,000 daily active listeners come through the room. We had uh, 100,000 podcast downloads in 75 days. Like We were doing something, and I was president and CEO of Breakfast with Champions, and I knew I wanted to do something for Giving Tuesday. And Tiffany Haddish popped in the room one morning. A lot of celebrities would kind of pop in and out of clubhouse rooms during the pandemic. And um, she and I connected over DM. And then based off of that, I ended up connecting with the executive director of her foundation, the She Ready Foundation for Foster Youth. So we partnered together for Giving Tuesday. And it's actually like one of the things I'm most proud of in my time there. We raised $50,000 in six hours for foster youth. And again, Through this, I built a relationship with the executive director of her foundation. And when I went to LA a few months later, we met for coffee and she talked to me all about everything charitable that Tiffany wanted to do in the community, not just supporting foster youth, um, but also that she cared about things like, you know, food deserts and access to healthy foods. And like, I really feel like I got to know um, her charitable aspirations through the executive director of her foundation. But here's why I'm bringing all this up. So as we were setting up the Giving Tuesday event, Um, so my like original background before I got into editorial and on my marketing agency, I worked in the nonprofit sector. My first job, I worked at the national nonprofit for the UN refugee agency. And I remember when we were trying to raise money, you would have these, um, like rate cards for lack of a better way to explain it. So instead of just telling people, um, you know, give us this much money, give us this much money, give us this much money you would translate those into real things. You would say, this donation will provide a refugee family with a tent. This donation will provide a refugee family with emergency medical care. You know, this donation will provide a refugee family with blankets, right? Whatever the case may be. So I remember asking the executive director of the She Ready Foundation for um, those similar kind of like price points that we could share out with our audience when we were raising money on Giving Tuesday. And One of the things that I remember her talking about, and you can find interviews where Tiffany Haddish talks about this, um, they talked about the fact that one of their lowest donations was just for a suitcase. Um, It was X amount of dollars for a suitcase because one of the things that Tiffany had experienced as a foster youth herself, um, you know, growing up in the foster care system was the fact that she would go from place to place with her possessions in a trash bag. And she talked about how personally dehumanizing that was and how even if you can just give a child the dignity of carrying their things from place to place in a suitcase instead of a trash bag, how meaningful that was. And I remember that story because like I literally, even whenever I donate, like my daughters grow out of clothes. I, I grew up kind of seeing donations in trash bags and I didn't realize how dehumanizing it was to act like here's my trash. Um, so I'm super thoughtful now about like all of my donations, like what bag are they in? And um, that just really resonated with me. Here's why I'm bringing this up. Because when we want to talk about archetypal mean girl behavior, Tiffany Haddish's childhood, it's documented. Like I'm not saying anything that she hasn't said in interviews, was her going from one foster home to the next with her possessions in a trash bag. Nikki and Paris Hilton grew up at these fashion shows. If anyone knows the decorum that's expected at these fashion shows, it's Nikki and Paris Hilton. That's literally their upbringing. And so, as I said, it's like archetypal mean girl behavior to look at the new girl, to look at the outsider, and challenge her to something that then everyone is gonna make videos about. Why would she do this? It's so embarrassing, it's so this, it's so that. Like, that is gross mean girl behavior. And I have to tell you, I'm most disappointed to see it from Paris Hilton. And it's always like, you're more disappointed by the people who you care about, believe in, would wanna work with. Like. The thing is that like, I honestly don't know anything about Nikki Hilton. I know it's not even her last name anymore. I don't know anything about Kathy Hilton. Like literally the last time I watched Bravo, um, Kyle and Kim were the Hilton sisters that were, um, you know, on Beverly Hills Housewives. Um, But Paris has really um, made incredible moves in the past like five years. Um, and, And even more so like year over year, I mean, in the past 18 months alone, the advocacy that she has taken on on Capitol Hill for, you know, childhood victims of abuse and who went through similar programs that she went through, like 
She has become an advocate for children. Um, she has, you know, had really honest and hard conversations about abuse and PTSD. Um, the investments that she's made in Web3 and in tech have been super interesting and super savvy. She's dropped the baby voice. Like, she's kind of kept the brand that has kept her in the public eye. But, like, she has made so many moves that, like, I, I have been watching her in awe and um, I'm so disappointed to see her part of this archetypal mean girl behavior. And again, it just goes to show that like you are who you surround yourself with and we actually see that sometimes, right? So like you'll see um, these kind of like old money boarding school um, type of behaviors and sometimes you'll see someone like leave the nest and... Um, adopt a different value set and then they go back and it just it's so disappointing to see that that that's how they would behave it's such mean girl behavior it's just so like you want to know who's lacking taste and decorum I think to be born into that social set and dare someone who wasn't to do something that would make everyone laugh at them it's such a, it's like a moment that you would expect to see in like a teen coming of age comedy from like the mean girl. As I said, it's, it's just archetypal high school mean girl behavior. Um, anyway, that's, that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments.